Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you a tour of our vegetable garden. So this is kind of a fall vegetable garden tour because we are technically in fall, but it's kind of end of summer because I haven't cleaned out anything yet. So I wanted to show you what it looks like before I get everything cleaned out and get some other things planted for uh, late fall and hopefully some winter crops. I've been really proud of this space this year. It has been so productive. I wasn't sure how it was gonna go because it was kind of an untested soil mix that I used. Um, and it's my first year gardening in this space. Uh, it is in full sun. In fact, we waited for kind of an overcast day to film this. It was overcast until we stepped outside and the sun kind of came out. So I'm hoping that it goes back behind a cloud um, anyway, I wanted to start by showing you what the Sweet Romance Lavender looks like because we haven't updated you on that, I don't think, but it has done really, really well. And I was kind of wondering because it's in a spot that's, like I said, full sun and it's getting all the heat from the gravel. But lavender, as you know, likes heat, it likes sun. Um, it also likes dry conditions. So I think that after its initial kind of it, it did wane a little bit right after I planted it. And I thought, oh boy. Hopefully this stuff bounces back, but look at it. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. So I've been really happy with that. I did replace one on the very end and that's it. So out of like 30 or 35, I can't remember how many we planted, only having to replace one is amazing. So what I wanna do is go bed by bed and talk to you about everything I've planted this year. So this tour is gonna to probably be a little bit long, um, but it's almost kind of nice for me because I can uh, watch back next winter or this winter um, when I'm planning this space and kind of get an idea of everything that I planted. It's almost like a journal. So I wanna start with this bed right here. You can see I have been letting my basil bolt because we've had a couple of nights already below 40. Uh, and we've got some nights really close to freezing coming in the next 10 days. So I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna let the basil bolt because it's not gonna last for very long anyway. This is called a Maisel basil. This one's from Proven Winners. It'll be available next year. It's a sterile basil. So even if it flowers, it doesn't mess with the productivity or the flavor. Um, so if you find it next year, definitely snag it because you can tell how wonderful it's done. I think this is only three plants right here. Um, it's almost kind of taken over my eggplant here. <laughs> the eggplants had to kind of like grow out because it's not given any room up above here. Um, but this has been extremely productive. Check these out. I mean, I'm surprised this branch right here hasn't broken. There's like four or five on it. That was planted later on in the summer, like end of June. Uh, and honestly, I don't, I, I guess I don't know how to prepare eggplant very well or in a way I like it. I grow them because they're pretty <laughs> and I'll give them to somebody who likes to eat them, but I also like to use them in arrangements. Moving on to this side, the zucchini is, the, oh, and I didn't mention before I planted those things, I had lettuce. So that was my first crop this spring, a gourmet blend of lettuce that did beautifully and we harvested all of it before that went in. The zucchini is the only thing I planted on this side uh, and it's, you know, of course done really well. I wish that we could have a zucchini that almost, I almost wish we had one that didn't produce quite as quickly because I could not keep up on it. I mean, honestly, look at this one too. I mean, this happens in the matter of like a day or two. They start out so nice, like this one right here. And then in like two days, there are these huge things that are really only good for bread, which I like zucchini bread, but mercy. I've grated quite a bit and put it in the freezer. I also planted some beets in here. These went in on August 26th. Um, I did plant some other crops of beets and greens on that same day, but they're getting a lot more sun than these because these are, you know, <laughs> being shrouded by the zucchini leaves. And I'll show you those here in a minute. Um, moving this way, I've got a sweet basil, just one plant and it's done really well. And a Laroma tomato, which I was kind of worried about for a minute there because it started looking, looking like it was getting leaf curl, um, but it pushed through whatever it was going on with it and it's continued to grow. There's still like, look at this, tons of produce on this plant. I remember the very first crop I pulled off of it, it had like, I don't know, I got a huge basket full of these tomatoes and they're wonderful. It hasn't grown as tall as I thought it would, but I think that's because it struggled there for a little bit. Moving on to this bed, this is a three by six. I should mention that all of my beds are three feet wide and then are kind of designed by six foot length. So this L shape has three foot ends and six foot long runs, if that makes sense. So we've got a three by six here where I planted my garlic last fall. This whole bed had Italian garlic and they did great. 
harvested those, I think it was right toward the end of June, and then I planted some corn. This is ambrosia, it's a 75 day bicolor, super great sweet corn. In fact, ambrosia is, I wanna say the most popular corn seed we sell down at the garden center. Um, we harvested everything, I think. Oh, we might've missed one ear right there. But I was really thrilled. We were harvesting corn, corn right at the beginning of September, which is amazing. Now I'm getting ready to cut this and use it in decorating. And then I've got a three by four bed here, which in the beginning I had green cabbage. I planted four of them. They did great, we ate them all. I had a slicer cucumber on this side that I just planted toward the edge and let it spill into the walkway. And uh, I got quite a number of cucumbers before the plant got spider mites, so I had to pull it. You can spray for that sort of thing, but spider mites are incredibly hard to deal with and I don't wanna spray, well, I don't spray anything that's not organic in this space. Um, but I don't really wanna to have to spray a lot at all. So I just got rid of the plant because I have another cucumber that was doing great. This is a garden treasure tomato. This one's from Proven Winners, also going to be available next year. I kept up you guys for a long time on keeping everything pruned. And then I kind of let it go the last like couple of weeks and oh my word, just letting your tomatoes go a little bit. I mean, they just want to take over. In fact, this tomato got so big, it bent its whole cage over and I had to put a rebar stake in here to try to keep it upright. But this type of tomato is a slicer type tomato. And this is kind of a smaller one. I've been um, getting tomatoes probably like this size off of this plant. And I planted this exact variety three different ways. I planted it here in a raised bed. I put it in a container and then there's another space where I put it straight in the ground just to see the difference in how it grew. Um, I would say that raised bed in the ground did much better than the container, which I'll show you next over here. <clears throat> now this bed needs a major overhaul. This is the garden treasure in the, in the pot. And all of the tomatoes that have come off this have been really tasty, but they've all been smaller. Like this is kind of a poor representation of what I've been actually getting off that one. Um, I've been keeping up on this one definitely better, obviously, on pruning. But it looked like this one was kind of dealing, and I think maybe too it got pretty cold the other night, so it's kind of looking a little bit, like things are about ready to need to be pulled. Like this cucumber, this is an English cucumber um, that has spider mites, and I left it because I wanted to show you what it looked like when plants got spider mites. They'll start to look, um, instead of nice and green, they'll start to look um, like speckly, You'll see webbing. I don't know if you can see that. See all that webbing right there? Full of little spider mites. They suck the sap out of your leaves and they will completely defoliate plants like quickly. And that's probably our number one hardest pest to get rid of, especially organically. This is going out today and I'm gonna throw this in our dumpster. This is not gonna go into my compost bins because I don't want anything like to perpetuate the problem. In fact, this will probably go in the dumpster too since it's in such close proximity. And I've been watching the ARBs too to make sure they're not getting it. They have no mites. I think this is like the host plant, which, you know, yeah, I gotta get it out of here. And then right in front here, I've got butternut squash that went in at the end of June and it's got butternut squash everywhere. I'm gonna set these right here. Remind me, Erin, that I've got produce hanging out in the garden here that's picked. Um, and this vine goes all the way back behind the tomato pot and there's a couple of butternuts back there. Um, but these are getting close to being ready to pick. You can see this one's kind of coloring up to that tan rather than more of a, they kind of have more of a green hue when they're younger like this. Oop, that one's got a rock on it. And in this bed, um, I had broccoli. I had four broccoli plants, four broccoli, which is a broccoli kale hybrid. That was a fun one to try out. They were like broccoli florets, but a little bit smaller and a little bit more tender, actually. Um, so that's something that I would definitely repeat again if we get those plants. And I started with plants on all of those uh, down from the garden center. We got four packs in. And I think that's, I think that's all I had in this space in the spring. Okay, so this three by six right here, I have a crookneck summer squash that I've let Kind of a lot of the squash are older. So come look at this right here. There's a baby one. And you want to harvest them young, not quite this young. But then this is what happens when they get older. They get all warty and kind of hard skinned. But I actually like to use these a lot for fall decorating. So you'll see these 
like on my back porch displays, you'll see those kind of squash worked in. So I started with sugar pod peas on this trellis in the spring, and then I've since had two crops of beans, and I'm on my third crop here, um, which I'm definitely not gonna be getting any beans off of them. We've all kind of in our area been having a, an issue with beans this late in the season, so I don't know exactly what's going on, but that's okay. I had a lot of beans earlier. And then in this spot before the squash came in, I had onions that I planted from sets, and I'm still using those. I braided all the onions I got. They're down in our basement, and yeah, so this has been a great one. And then we've got another L-shaped bed here. This is a super fantastic tomato. And clearly, you know, I gave up on pruning a little while ago. But this one gets great big. I want to see if I can find one. Great big slicer tomatoes. Oh, I think I picked all of them off this one. There's tons of green ones. Oh, 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 oh. That's not ready to come off. Well, I just accidentally broke it. Nice looking tomatoes. This one's not quite ready, but pretty close. Um, Super Fantastic is a variety that my parents always grew and I really like it. Um, and then in front of it, I had four rows of beets, two rows of radishes first off. Then I've planted a crop of Nash beans and now I've got, um, I planted cabbage seed in there uh, on August 26th and it was too late. Um, I'm not having very good germ. I mean, I had a couple come up obviously not going to form cabbage before we get into winter but that's all right oh hey look a couple other tomatoes this side i planted carrots i planted uh red nantes and parisians and i'm still harvesting off of them i always think that we're going to eat more carrots than we actually do so it's nice they just hang out in the soil until i'm ready to use them then we've got a cantaloupe right here which went in in the end of june and oh look at that slips the vine perfectly. That's when you know they are perfectly ripe. So Erin and I will probably eat this one for lunch today. Um, anyway, this one went in, I think I just said that, late. So I'm very thankful to be getting the amount of produce we are getting off of this vine. I had lettuce in this spot and I planted just a blend. Again, I like to do like a leaf lettuce that's got red, like an all red leaf and then an all green and then maybe one that's speckly so it's kind of pretty. Um, I do not like arugula. And that's in a lot of, of lettuce blends. Um, so I just kind of create my own blends from our bulk bins down at uh, the garden center. Okay, I'm gonna set this next to my tomatoes. This side, I've got four different pepper plants. And I mean, they've gotten kind of gangly, but oh my word, look at this. I put a stake in here, kind of keep it upright, but look at all of these peppers. Crazy. That one's called a holy mole. I've got a sweet banana in there, a corsel, and a serrano. Uh, and it's been a really good pepper year for pretty much everyone in our area. So that's great. I had celery planted here. I had five plants that I harvested every single one and used them all. They did great. Then I planted some spinach and then I had a gopher come through. So I had nice little seedlings coming up in two really neat looking rows. And then I came out one morning and there was a huge gopher mound right in the middle of it. Uh, so some of them survived, some of them didn't. Um, I've had 42 gopher mounds this year, 42 in my gardens, not all in the vegetable garden, but kind of scattered around. And it's just been such a pain because they make such a huge mess and they eat roots out from underneath plants. In fact, when it came through, Initially, it made a mound right underneath this tomato plant and it severed a bunch of the main branches. And so I thought I was gonna lose the tomato. Clearly, it uh, hasn't skipped a beat. It kind of uh, had to pick a bunch of dead branches out of there. Um, and then it kind of took off and kept going. But then the gopher came and made its second mound over here. This is a sun sugar cherry tomato. So you get these beautiful orange, super sweet cherries. Uh, this plant is a beast though. If you are gonna grow this variety, I mean, be prepared for a lot of tomatoes and have proper, like a proper tomato frame to go on it. Because I mean, this is just so heavy. And this area right now, because our arborvitas are still babies, there is no wind break. The wind comes from the west right through here. And it just like a couple of times, my tomato has been completely flat. All of them, all four of them have done that. Um, so I've had to kind of restake them back up, prune them up. Um, but this is such a productive, wonderful variety. So let's bounce over to this uh, raised bed. Over there, I've got the other bull's blood beets that I seeded on the 26th of August. 
as well as some cilantro. Both are doing great. Um, they get the proper amount of light here, and that's why these beets look so much better than the other ones by my, by my zucchini. But I have thinned those once. I might need to go in and thin them again. Um, but it might be that I'll either get smaller beets or I might just use the greens on those depending on how our weather goes. In the corner, I've got a brandywine tomato, which is an heirloom, and they're a longer day tomato. And a lot of these, it looks like, ooh, like I didn't get to them in time and they're pretty like squishy. Um, but there's a lot of green ones still starting to turn. Um, and you can see how much I need to be pruning on this. Like all of these branches should be gone. I mean, your goal is usually to try to keep a lot of the foliage away from the base of the plant, especially if you live in a moist or humid climate, um, because it just helps keep airflow going and helps reduce disease and fungal things, that kind of thing. In our area, we don't have to usually worry about that as much because we're so dry. Uh, in front of it, I've got four, three types of bell peppers and a holopride, which this holopride, look at this. I mean, just nuts, nuts production. <laughs> like if anybody needs jalapenos, come to my house. I've got a lot. We've got bell peppers here. This is a red beauty, big, beautiful bell peppers. We've got a mini bell which these are nice and sweet little kind of snack sized peppers. I think they're, they might, like they are supposed to get a little bit bigger than this maybe, maybe I'm mistaken, but they're really tasty. And then I've got a King Arthur right here, which I didn't really stake any of these properly. So they're kind of going all over the place, but it hasn't messed with the productivity at all. Okay, so with this three by six bed full of corn, kind of the same story, I had garlic in here and then I planted a late crop of corn. This one went in about 10 days after that corn over on the other side. So we're actually still harvesting off of it. Uh, during a really bad windstorm, um, every single one of these stalks was flat one day. I came out here, a bunch of my tomatoes had fallen over, the whole thing of corn was down. So I ran a stake on either end of each row of corn and then just used jute twine and kind of picked them back up a little bit. And they've stayed up for the most part, but I was so sad when I came out and saw that because everything was looking so good and they were just starting to tassel, um, which means they were like corn was soon to follow. So I didn't want to lose them. This bed here was where I had the Yukon Gold potatoes um, that we harvested out. Then I seeded, I think this bed actually sat empty for a couple of weeks. Uh, and then I seeded the zinnias on July 21st. We've got state fair, which are huge. I mean, just super tall and super long stems. Great for bouquets. Then I've got a variety called peppermint stick. I think both of these varieties came from botanical interest. I mean, I just picked up a couple of packets of seed down at the garden center and it was kind of the last varieties we had left. And I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna pop them in and we'll see what happens. And then this bed here is a three by four and it has been just kind of a catch all. I've got a crimson sweet watermelon right here planted like on this side on the edge i've got three watermelons here there's one back there looks like somebody scratched it a bunch and then i've got one sitting in here and they're just not quite ripe yet because they went in late this one also has spider mites um so i'm even if these watermelon don't quite ripen i might pull the whole vine but i've got a bunch of herbs in here too i've got basil there's a rosemary that looks really good. This one, I'm gonna to try to get this dug and potted and brought inside because they're not hardy enough to survive our winters. There is a lemon thyme hiding underneath the basil in here. And then I just pop some marigolds because I like the color. I think it's really fun to have a little bit of color in the vegetable garden. Uh, and then popping over to this side, this is another three by four bed that I thought I could tuck in a honeydew melon. <laughs> There's no tucking in melon plants. I mean, this one I have trimmed twice so that I could still walk down the aisles and then eventually I kind of just gave up and it's just going for it. And there are honeydew melon everywhere. I mean, they are looking great. Look at that. And there's probably, I don't know, a dozen and a half in uh, like scattered around in this vine. So that's great. I've um, harvested one so far. And then on the corner or on the edge, I should say, of each one of the three by four beds, I do have a large terracotta pot with a boxwood because I want some evergreen interest out here because we park right next to this vegetable garden. I still want it to look pretty even in the wintertime. 
So I want to trim these so they stay a really tight sphere. And then I'll just leave them out here and make sure I give them water every once in a while. Um, and yeah, so that pretty much sums up this vegetable gardening space, but there's a couple other areas where I planted some food crops that I wanted to update you on because I showed you in previous videos. So let's head this direction first. You might notice we've got a big mess going on. We're having grass removed right now, and I'm not gonna really touch on that in this video because we have another one coming out that will explain everything. So let's look at this pumpkin vine right here. This is one jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. Um, I've already harvested, let's see, I think I've cut five pumpkins from this vine to use in projects, uh, but it's filled in this area great. It was just because I knew that we had some plants coming, like we're putting in a boxwood hedge this fall right here, um, but we, we didn't have the plants and I didn't want this area just to sit blank with nothing in it. So I decided to pop a couple vines in because, you know, they do this thing and they cover it, they help with weeds and it gives you a little bit of produce too. So you can see that there's a couple on this side that are starting to ripen. And there's a few more toward that edge. Let's see, there's like four or five. I think I, in all, I got about a dozen off of this vine. Also, I had a bunch of pumpkins and things over here, a Cinderella pumpkin. There were three other squash plants that I just pulled when we had uh, this project started. Uh, and I got a whole trailer full, but we'll show that in that other video about the grass. And there's also three other tomatoes that have been super productive. So I have a garden gem over there, a garden treasure, and a green zebra. Uh, which is another heirloom. Now I have uh, the sweet potatoes I wanna show you and some peas I planted late in the season. So these are some peas I planted um, when the Alberta spruces kind of took a nosedive and they were getting all burned on one side. So I pulled those and planted peas, which I'm really excited. These are sugar snap pole peas um, that I went and got down at the garden center. And I put these little uh, bamboo teepees in there and staked them into the pots. And I think it looks really cute. Like I'm really excited. Even if I don't get peas on them this fall, I mean, they kind of filled in and they did the trick. Like they added that centerpiece um, and because I couldn't find four of anything that was big enough for these pots that would look right. Um, so this was a really good alternative and a way that I hoped I would get a little bit more produce. So we'll see. It looks like we might start to get a few blooms here, hopefully in the next week or so. Also, the Super Tunia Royal Magenta has done really well. In fact, Aaron was just commenting the other day that he feels like it's starting to look even like more intense or darker in color. I was worried. When you pull four centerpieces out of your pots, you know, sometimes your annuals around it get disturbed a little bit too much and they don't take to it very well and then they don't look very good for the rest of the season, especially when you have four pots that you want them to look all the same. Um, so I've been very thankful that they all did really well. They didn't skip a beat and they all pretty much look uniform, thankfully. All right, one more update. So here are the sweet potatoes that I planted. There are 30 slips that I put in these raised beds. So these are the cedar raised beds that we got from Gardener Supply that we initially had in our vegetable garden area. We got them all laid out and they looked a little bit too short. I needed something a little bit taller and beefier for that spot. So we thought it would be fun to come back here, stack them up and kind of make two really tall raised beds, which have been lovely. Uh, you know, when weeds come up, I don't have to bend over. I can just reach in there and pull them. These are technically past their 120 maturity date, uh, which was September 15th. So I'm gonna be harvesting them here pretty quick. When September 15th rolled around, the vines still looked really good. They were like emerald green. There was no yellowing or anything yet. Now they're starting to show signs of just stopping for the season. So I am probably gonna harvest them out this week and we will do a video. I have no idea what I'm gonna find. The soil in these raised beds for some reason was extremely hard. Um, I tried to work it up when I planted the plants, but when you're doing something, a crop that's a tuber, you really need light fluffy soil so it has a chance to expand. So I don't know what kind of crop I'll have, but it'll be a very good learning experience and it'll be very good to see, like if we have big tubers, great. I don't need to worry about adding a lot of extra stuff, but if they're really small and I don't get very many, then it means I need to work on the soil a little bit back here. So that is it, you guys. That is all of the areas where I have vegetables growing. It's been a great year. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.